welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Today I am doing a favorites video. I'm updating you on some products that I've been loving the last two months. And actually, I mean, as much as I have products here, it's a little bit more concept. So I have specific products to talk about that have been in use for me, but I feel like it's more about larger categories, larger ideas, again, larger concepts. So I'm excited. I feel like we have a lot to catch up on because so much has happened in the last two months. I really feel like it's been forever as well as like not very long. Lots of ups and downs for me. I've been out of state. I've been redoing my beauty space. I've been trying to prepare for the holidays. And so, yeah, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoy hearing what I have. I've like loved doing these videos and I really missed out on doing my October one. So I think this might be the last one I do before kind of an end of the year wrap up of my favorite products that I tried in 2022, which sounds so bizarre hard to say. <laughs> Honestly, let's just get into it though. I feel like first and foremost I want to talk about the fact that I've really enjoyed contouring as of late I feel like you know, I was getting into the cream bronzers, which I really have been enjoying But the NARS one that I was loving uh, was a little bit more of like a true bronzer and very natural So it added just such a it's a beautiful product and I really was enjoying it But I feel like I don't know if it's for winter or as the months have been getting cooler or what's going on But I have been enjoying a little bit more sculpt a little bit more va va voom in general, I feel like with my makeup. And so I'm not gonna talk your ear off about the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer because you already know. Like I've mentioned this a lot lately, but I've definitely been gravitating to this cream bronzer um, the most out of my collection because it is one of the darker ones for me that I can kind of build up. And it's still super easy to blend. It is a little bit olive toned. So I find that it kind of plays a little bit as a contour, a little bit as a bronzer. Like I can kind of get both things from it a little bit more sculpting than just bronzing. Uh, so I've been loving this. Obviously, I mean, I've hit pan on it, which is like so exciting. Like I really love seeing some use out of my products and that kind of is coming into play with a lot of different things I'll be talking about. But I think even more exciting, honestly, and something that is just interesting to me is the Kevin Aquan, the sculpting powder. I have the shade light finally is getting some action from me. I have kept this baby around through declutter after declutter. It's like the only contouring powder I have in my collection currently. And so I never wanted to declutter it. It is a great product. It's a really nice cool tone. There's three shades though in the line. And this gives more of that true kind of contoured look instead of something bronze because it doesn't go too warm. And I've really been enjoying adding this to the cream bronzer like on top of it. I'll usually use a smaller brush, either something like the chiseled cheek from Sigma. I've also been enjoying this smaller angled brush. This is the BK Beauty 112 and I really like this one too for my nose. You know, this is just a delicate little area for me. Product so easily can look effed up. Like <laughs> It looks bad a lot of the time. I try really hard to keep my skin in really good condition and use the correct products and also the correct techniques so I'm not putting too much product on my nose, but alas, you know, it's sometimes like a crapshoot if it's going to go well or not. And I find sometimes when I'm trying to, you know, use a brush and really get a cream contour on my nose, I just can't do those exfoliating brushing movements as much. Like the more I do that, the more likelihood of my nose looking bad it's gonna go. I don't even know if <laughs> that grammatically made sense, but you get it. But the powder, I can do a lot softer. You know, I really don't need to buff it in as much because it's not a cream. And so I can just very gently just like run this down. I don't feel like I'm disturbing anything and I still get a little bit of shape on my nose and uh, I've really just been loving it and I'm so glad that I had it in my collection already. You guys know I've been talking and thinking about decluttering just a little bit differently this year and I do think I'm gonna do a declutter like end of the year declutter so that will probably be coming up in December. I don't know how it's gonna go but we'll get into that I guess when that happens slash if that happens. <laughs> so just in general contouring but on top of that I've really been enjoying powdering my face a little bit more which is like blowing my mind you guys know I used to powder all the time then I got into no powder and really enjoyed that look more like 2022 I don't know early 2022 and although I love the look of not powdering and I really feel like if you can get away with not powdering and you're not gonna get super shiny and oily it can look really great especially if you're finding your foundation looking a little heavy on your skin or just a little noticeable sometimes you know going without powder can help that but I am I'm an oily gal and I've just, you know, I love a glowy look, but sometimes it's a little bit 
I'm getting a little outrageous. I'm getting a little crazy with the oils and kind of re-emerging into society a little bit more this year. You know, I want my makeup to last longer. I don't want to be as shiny throughout the night. And so I have been enjoying powdering a little bit. So I've been going back to my Huda Beauty. I find this one, it's a loose powder and I have the shade Pound Cake. If I use this, I usually get a, a lot more of a matte look and I feel like a lot of longevity out of this one. So I've been enjoying that. I've even been retesting the Rare Beauty Powder. This is something that came out really early this year along with those stick bronzers. And I didn't initially like this powder because this is the lightest shade and it is a little bit pink. Um, and I just think at that time, again, the beginning of the year, I wasn't as into powdering, but I've been enjoying this. It's very light and how I usually will use a powder is just with a big fluffy brush I put a little bit on I just get a little bit usually on like a corner of the brush and then I will use the lid and really work it into the brush so that way it's evenly dispersed throughout it and so I'm not just like you know getting one area of my skin really powdered and the rest not and then I will just go in and I really just tap I'm not really doing sweeping motions. again I really don't want to disturb any of the foundation or other products I've already put on but I will just tap it and I usually hit the center of my face the t-zone the oil part of my skin and I really focus on the forehead on the sides of the cheek a little on the nose even sometimes as well as around the mouth and the chin sometimes with whatever's left I'll go on the outsides but I tend to not even need to hit those areas I'm really not producing oil there but these have been great I think I do overall prefer the look of loose powder sometimes it's not as convenient and I do want to try some like pressed translucent powders I know Charlotte Tilbury came out with one this year that's one that's on my list I kind I want to try the NARS one. I'm sure there's other ones out there and if you have any recommendations I'd love to know. But yeah just using powders to get a bit of a longer wear has been great but then if I really want to bring some of the moisture back because you know I don't initially love the look of powder all of the time. Sometimes it's fine but sometimes it does look a little powdery or you know it's not my favorite but then throughout the wear you know it looks good and so I kind of compromise that but if I want I will go in with a spray to kind of bring some life back Back to my skin without being like overly overly shiny. I've done that before with the Caudalie although I tend to make this more of a skincare thing because it's so refreshing. I really like this for like morning skincare but I've been reaching for my Peach and Lily. This is the Glass Skin Veil Mist and I was using this at some points without any powder and I just feel like that's too glossy of a look but with powder I feel like that's really the nice balance to bring some life back to my skin while still being powdered and having that longevity and I've also been going back to my half magic beauty one so I've been just bringing those out a little bit more the Mac one's really good too and it's like reminding me of oh yeah I used to powder and then spray and then go in with my highlighter and um, I've just been liking that routine okay continuing on with some favorites another more concept one we're talking foundations now and you guys know I love my Yensa I've been using this for years and it's been the most like repurchased foundation probably ever for me but definitely within the last I don't know three years and I still love this product but I definitely feel like I'm ready to branch out a little bit and I've talked about that here and there in different videos and new releases videos and whatnot and I don't have the biggest foundation collection I really don't have too many but I've really been branching out which is what I already have so I've been going back to my sneaky balm from salt New York I have this little case this is from mob beauty and I was hoping that it would fit the, oh my gosh, here we go. I was hoping it would fit the pan for the Salt New York because I really wanted a singular compact and it does. Although for some reason the bottom like comes up every time I open it, but at least it does fit perfectly, which is so nice. But look at how much is in there, barely any. I'm like really using this up, which feels good. Another one of the products that I'm like, look at me go, using it up, not forcing myself to, not putting pressure on myself. It's not a competition, but it just feels good, you know, obviously to see some good progress in something. I've been enjoying this with a brush and it is a bit dewy on me and I do need to powder and touch up with it, but the way this looks on my skin is so beautiful. I cannot deny how nice this looks. It adds just enough coverage where I can cover my redness. I feel a lot more put together, but it looks really sneaky and undetectable on my skin. And if you have combo skin or you have dry skin and you haven't tried this, I feel like it might be a really great product for you. I have the shade number 12, which was the lightest when it came out, but I think since then there is a shade 13. Maybe that's even a little bit lighter. It's just been great. I've been 
been using the brush too and I feel like that helps to not make it as dewy as maybe the sponge would um, and I've been pairing it with different primers and that's been interesting as well so that's been fun exploring that using that and you know just seeing other products on my skin and actually liking the way they look is inspiring me to you know get some samples maybe I have a ton of samples a foundation so I'm like let's try them out let's see if any of these are maybe good um, the other one I've been using this is what I'm wearing today for my skin is the stick foundation from makeup revolution this is my second one of these so I've already used up a full one and I'm almost done that's all I have the little nub <laughs> really exciting on that one. I'm not sure if I'll repurchase this. I don't know if I'm really a, a stick foundation person anymore, but this has probably the most coverage out of all the foundations that I have. And I've really been exploring that too, like going with different coverages, going with different finishes, going with different formulas, and just seeing how those look and exploring them. And I have been enjoying that as well as enjoying the fact that I'm actually using this up. If you're looking for a stick foundation and this is still available, I don't know why I felt like it was maybe getting you know harder to find this is a pretty good one I use the shade f4 I think I prefer it right now with a sponge because I just can get a sheer application and I want that only because I can find this settling into my pores depending on the primer that I use and I obviously don't, I mean I personally don't like that <laughs> I don't know about you but I don't like that look so yeah I'm excited to get this gone but also excited to be exploring full coverage and again branching out when it comes to foundation if you have some foundation recommendations, I would love to know them. I'm looking for things that are maybe demi matte or I mean, I don't really love too matte on the skin. I really I do like glow. I do but I want longevity. If you have oily skin and you have some recommendations, let me know. And I'd love to try some drugstore stuff if they have good shade ranges and some good formulas. That would be amazing. But I'm kind of on the lookout too for myself. Okay, so that was a lot I know. But as much as I'm talking about the products that I have, it's really more about about exploring just different things than I have been doing and um, that's been really fun to do and to branch out with techniques that I haven't used in a while you know kind of rotating some new stuff in when it comes to style of makeup I have been testing tons of eyeshadows as of recent and I've really been enjoying a lot I do really love my Charlotte Tilbury pop shadows I've been enjoying the Pat McGrath palettes for holiday the five pans I have some singles that I've been loving but I just wanted to put one thing in here because I've just been testing a lot and this is my <laughs> I just love these. I'm a sucker. I am a sucker. Okay. These are from Odin's Eye and I love the holiday collection that they came out with. I love the theming. I am a sucker for Christmas and the holidays and I just vibe with it. I love the way that they look, but also the color stories. It's really important to me, obviously, that I like the actual colors and I love how festive these palettes are. This is the Merry Christmas palette and you get that festive color story. There's reds, there's greens in here, but it's like different enough that it's not so holiday that I wouldn't be inspired to use it other times. I'm wearing this one today. I think this is my favorite palette out of the two. I'll show you real fast the Christmas Eve palette. This one's a bit more cool toned. It has lots of blues, some purples, but also golds, lots of sparkles. I have a video with these palettes showing the swatches and stuff if you want to check that out. I'll try to remember to link it down below. But like I was saying, this is I think my favorite one. I just love the warm tones that are in here. I love the pinks and the greens paired together. I just love the endless kind of combinations. And again, although you get the greens, you get the reds for the holidays, there's so much more you can do with this. You can pick a matte, pick a shimmer, and you have an eye look. And that's kind of what I did today. I am wearing gingerbread on the outer corner. It's like an orangey brown, but I find this pulls pretty orange. So it's not super neutral, even though it kind of looks like it in the pan compared to everything else. And so I just blended that into my outer corner. Then I really love the shade snowman it's one of those more neutral leaning duochromes but this one does flash pretty green I guess and I love that limey green so I have that just all over my eye blended everywhere basically I did set down a glitter glue with it because I just I want that little bit more longevity a little bit more pizzazz and I've been doing that with a lot more of my palettes than I used to and I've been liking that look so that's pretty interesting a little bit of you know I'm just like kind of going back to a few different techniques you know and also I feel like going for a heavy 
look overall maybe lately. But anyway, I decided to put Best Wishes, which is a really beautiful like pastel yet bright green on my inner corner. And then I topped that over with just my Pat McGrath highlighter to kind of tone it down a little. And I really loved the look, obviously topped it with some mascara, you know, finished it out. And I really love this. I love that I can do something simple, but if you guys didn't catch my short, I did a short using this palette and I did something a little bit more bold. I did like a red halo eye, lots of sparkle. I feel like it's a very festive and a little bit of a different take though on a classic like Christmassy type eye. So I have just been loving these, you guys. And I'm kind of sad that they're gonna be limited edition, but obviously it makes sense because they're so holiday themed. But I feel like I'm gonna wanna use these throughout the year. And I really love that these have made me remember I do love color. Like I know I love the neutrals and I can get down with neutrals and I love wearing neutrals a lot of the time now, but I do still love color. It's not like I've banished color from my life, you know? And I also am like, I don't need to define that I only use neutrals or only use color. I just do whatever the fuck I want, whatever I'm inspired by, and I just love all my makeup and get inspired and do a look. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I really love that because it's like, I do love color. It's just, I maybe do it in my own way or I'm using one or two shades instead of a full blown eye or maybe I am doing, I don't know, a whole smoky eye. I'm just doing whatever I want and loving it. And these for so many reasons, the quality, the color story, the packaging, the feeling, the vibe, just all of it, home run. Home run to me, you guys know. I will mention, I do have a coat of Odin's eye, no pressure, obviously with anything it's affiliated. Yeah, just wanted to throw that out there, but I've been loving those and I feel like they're like, the eyeshadow I really wanted to feature in here, even though I do have a lot of different eyeshadow loves that I hope to feature in different videos coming up. Last for like makeup products, I did want to shout out these Romand Glasting Water Tints. I've been loving these. I'm really excited because I'm going to try some more of these Glasting Tints. They have like a juicy tint. They have different ones. I did a whole video talking about some K-Beauty gems that I've been trying recently and what are my favorites. These made it into that video and they are just so nice. I don't want to get too much into it because if you just watch that video, you're going to be like, duh, we get it, we get it. But these are a gloss that tints your lips as you wear it. They're semi sheer, which I love. So they go on and they don't seem like, you know, they're going to tint your lips. But when you take it off or as it wears off, you do have a stain left behind that's super natural looking. I feel like it tints really evenly. Um, it doesn't look patchy or only go hot pink. I feel like so many lip tints are just like, okay, we all don't want hot pink lips. Like, that's a look and that can be cool but like so many tints feel like they come out to the same freaking color like what's going on these don't do that and I love that about them they're really comfortable to wear I love you can touch up with them really easy and they don't like layer odd or if you already like the way the lips are tinted then you can just put on a regular gloss on top of that too so I've been loving these and I think they're really good they don't have like the biggest variety of shades they're all kind of in that more natural or red tone but they all have a bit of a difference to them and I've been loving them so I wanted to shout them out all right did you think the video is done there like, like, no, we have so much more to talk about still. <laughs> Moving on to some more concepts. I want to just say, if you have products out there that you love and you've finished them up and you've used them up and you haven't repurchased them yet and you're like waiting for something to do it and you still are buying some other new products because, oh, you want to try them, but you're not buying the actual products you already know you are obsessed with and you love, I just want to say, do it. I know it hurts and I don't know what that's about. Like why do, or maybe it's just me, but I don't think it is. Why is it so hard to repurchase products that I know I already love? <laughs> Whereas new products I'm testing, it's not, it doesn't hurt as much for some reason. I don't, I don't know why, I hate that. But the products I repurchased during the Sephora sale, the Fresh Strawberry Sugar Face Exfoliator, love. I'm so glad it's back in my life. The Pharmacy Honeymoon Glow, Mwah. so good. Just as good as I remembered. If anything, I feel like in the time that I didn't have this, the magic of it dimmed a little in my, my memory. And then getting it back, it's like, oh my gosh, it's even better than I remember. And same with the eye cream from Belief. So I've just been loving these and I'm like, man, such good purchases. These last me a long time and they really are these really fulfilling products that come through for me. And I, I love that. So I just wanted to say, if you have have those I know it can be tough but those sometimes are the ones that should be purchased again first you know because they're so good instead of like a new eyeshadow palette saying that to myself you know <laughs> next another favorite in terms of concept I've been washing my brushes I don't know who I am I don't know who I am but I have been keeping up with washing my brushes I have nice 
clean brushes. I know this one isn't right now, but it's because I used it just like once. Like, you know, it's not like packed full of product. And I know that sounds gross. And you know, there's this part of me that doesn't want to like admit online to, you know, thousands of people that I was like, keeping my brushes clean isn't the easiest, but I also know that like, that's the reality for like most of us at home. You know, if you are someone out there who is keeping up with cleaning your brushes, just know your mental health is probably really great. <laughs> You're probably killing the game. I'm so happy for you. Like, keep up the good work. But for some of us, it's a tough, it's a toughie. And also, you know, in some ways, you can still turn out a look with the dirty brush, but there is something magical and just luxurious about a clean blending brush. First tap into a shadow and you're going in and you're really making an eye look happen. I mean, I can't. I can't get over it. And I've been trying to keep up. I think I'm gonna do a brush declutter soon. I'm very lucky to get sent a lot of brushes and I feel like I have some just like good staples. And when I have too many brushes where I can just grab a new brush and not have to clean, I feel like that's not really like the standard I want or the routine. And plus I want to like have my tried and true brushes that it's like, oh, this is what I use when I do this step. You know, I kind of want that. So some products I use just in case you didn't know when I clean my brushes. Again, don't come for me with this, you know, crusty mat, but this is the Sigma brush cleaning mat. I love this and it saves your hand. So many years I would rub my brushes in my hand and it can get a little irritating, especially if you have a lot of brushes to clean. So the mat is really helpful to get in there and really get the gunk of your brushes out. When it comes to actually cleaning, I love the Beauty Blender Solid Cleanser for my brushes. It's so easy to wet your brush, dip it in here, kind of swirl it, swirl it on the mat, rinse it out, a little bit maybe go through a second time if you know it's been a while and there were a lot of cream products going on but obviously the more you clean your brushes the less gunked up they are so it's also becomes faster to do it if you keep up with it too which is so nice when it comes to though my beauty blenders I do like to use the actual liquid and this is also great for brushes if you don't want to have like two different options for spot cleaning because I'm not gonna always like deep clean my brushes but for spot cleaning I do really like the cinema secrets so just having a clean brush it really feels so nice like man I'm taking care of myself I'm taking care of my brushes and I've just actually had the capacity to do it and I, I don't feel like I've always had that and I'm really happy with that so I just wanted to throw it out there <laughs> maybe plant a little seed for one of you put on a YouTube video and get to washing and you will be so happy the next morning when you have some clean brushes I have two fragrance picks to talk about I have been obsessed with my Ariana Grande cloud 2.0 and I love Cloud the original, but 2.0 is so good. I think one of the only changes in this is that this has Embroxin in it. So that adds like something a little bit deeper. And I feel like also maybe a little bit more longevity, just a little. And for some reason, it just feels a little bit cozier, a little bit less airy. I promise you the difference is so minute that I really don't think you need both, but I'm just surprised I've been reaching for actually the 2.0 instead of the original. I love both of them. It is a lavender, coconut, whipped cream, woody scent and it is beautiful and I love it. It's sweet and airy, but not like overly sweet. It has something a little bit medical to it, a little bit like almost latexy to it to me anyway. And I just love it. It gets compared to Baccarat a lot and you guys know I love that. So I absolutely love that perfume and it's the one I've been wearing probably the last two months. Like when I'm just at home, don't know what I wanna wear. It's just an easy grab. And I have a lot of favorites when it comes to this time of year, but not a lot of them are like easy, you know, carefree grabs. It's like side effect is a whole mood. Dark vanilla is a whole mood. <laughs> <laughs> you're like a little more planned out with that outfit and what's going on and where you're going and what the weather's like. Where is cloud? Any day, any time, nighttime, daytime, cold as hell, a little bit warmer, doesn't matter. It works for everything. So I've been loving that. And then for a body mist, this is one I picked up during a Bath and Body Works sale a little bit ago. I don't know if it's online only, but I didn't smell it before I bought it. It's vanilla mocha martini. And you know, anything with mocha or even chocolate notes in it, I'm a little bit like, nervous about because sometimes chocolate can just be bad I think or stinky you know even some Hershey's chocolate bar itself like sometimes that tastes stinky you know what I'm talking about anyway the notes on this cozy cappuccino vanilla orchid and white tonka bean and this is really good I feel like if you like vanilla sky from Skylar this is a bit of a richer almost just a chocolatier version of vanilla sky from Skylar that's what it is because that's a vanilla cappuccino kind of scent and this is just as sweet and sugary and I feel like that vanilla is sugary while still being like warm and kind of 
caramelized and this doesn't necessarily have the caramel note but it has more of a chocolate note but it's in a very similar vein i don't know as soon as i smelled this i was like mm, i love it first off but also i was reminded of vanilla sky and i would like to make as many comparisons and connections to things to try to give the best recommendations anyway so yeah really i've been enjoying that one a little bit of a surprise for me and i feel like it's just a good like yummy gourmand that still has a perfumey quality to it it's not too juvenile but also not not too perfumey it's just like it's nice it's a good one and I'm surprised I like it as much as I do let me check my notes because I do want to talk a little bit about some personal stuff I know we've been here a while but everyone says you don't mind the long video so I need to just shut up about it every time okay so for a little bit of media obviously I have been jamming to Taylor Swift's new album Midnight uh, I love the 3 a.m. edition I did a video like recreating the cover if you want to see that if you didn't I'll leave it linked down below but it's interesting because when I first heard the original album without the additional songs I was like I was into it it was okay but I feel like this one's more over time I'm like grown on me a lot more and I feel like with different songs I'll have favorites at different times I feel like right now I really love glitch I like dear reader I love lavender haze still though uh, but there's like a lot I feel like the whole album's really great and I've really enjoyed it also Joji dropped an album which is awesome I just feel like I have some good music to be listening to <laughs> I'm also really excited that the white lotus is back with season two if you haven't seen season one it's on HBO and I really love that show I think it's done really well it's entertaining and thought-provoking and sexy and fun and serious and commentary and just all of the stuff that I like so I'm happy to be watching season two and you know as much as binging is really fun I kind of like that HBO does one episode a week on most of their like new stuff coming out because it gives you a chance to like sit with it anticipate for the next one um, sometimes when I binge watch a show I like remember it right then but I do not remember you know six months down the line what the hell happened at all it's like my brain just doesn't remember it's like that's not important next you know and so I kind of like that it gives me time to sit with it a little bit more and I feel like I uh, have a long-term experience and enjoyment of that so just something there and I think the last thing I want to leave it off on is that I have actually been enjoying doing shorts a little bit and I am shocked as anyone to say that I've been very resistant to short form content I don't have a TikTok. I really mostly watch everything I do watch on YouTube and I'm sure you've seen that YouTube is like pushing shorts like they want everyone to create shorts and I'm like okay I'm gonna try it and you know it's kind of scary trying something new like you know I know I've been making YouTube videos for a very long time but it's a very different type of content a different format it's kind of a whole different beast but it's been fun trying something new I kind of like that it's on the same platform and I'm realizing there are ways to utilize shorts for me and what I want to be doing where I can showcase mini tutorials very fast I can show swatches I can show comparisons and I'm really just playing around with a lot of different types of shorts right now and I'd love to know I mean if you have time and want to tell me what you like that'd be great just to kind of weigh in but I'm still kind of playing around with what I like doing what I feel like does well what I feel like you guys like like you know tweaking that as I go but it's actually been more fun than I thought and I will say as much as you know we can all have our issues with it some short form content I'm just like what's happening and I feel like there is a bit of a connection loss sometimes with it depending on what content you're focusing on as a creator I do think that it has a place and I want to give people credit you know it's so easy to shit on something or knock something when you're not doing it and you're not interested in it but when you actually take the time to try to make one of these videos as much as it's short and it's you know it has different pros and cons though and it's sometimes not easy I'm like how okay how the fuck do they do that like <laughs> as I'm trying to figure it out I'm like wow okay well that is harder than I thought or oh okay that must be how they do this or man you know it just gives you insight it gives you insight into other people it's different trends it's a different beast and it's been kind of fun actually when I'm not having the most pessimistic attitude about it and instead you know trying to figure out how it can work for me and what I actually do like about it or could like about it and how I could use it to my advantage and you know I've actually grown a little bit I think if you're a creator out there it might be one of the best ways to grow right now on the platform if you're finding yourself a little stuck I do think that you should try some shorts and I, unless you really don't want to obviously do what you want don't do it you could do whatever but if you are 
are looking for some growth and you wanna like get some new eyes on your stuff, I do think that it could be a really great way for that to happen for you and to just play around with it and find what works for you and like create a new type of short form content. Anyway, I'm, I'm going off, but I just, I have actually enjoyed it a little bit more than I thought and I just don't like how short suck you in. That's the only thing like, oh, scroll forever and I, I got shit to do and I don't like wasting my time as much as I can. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and my favorites. I know it's a lot of stuff and more concept wise and it's just like a lot. I don't even know, um, but I hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for being here. I'd love to know what you've been loving uh, going into the winter months. It'll be interesting to see how any of that changes as the weather actually starts to cool down. I mean, as much as I've been excited for fall, like only recently have we actually had like some storms, like wow, rain, who knew that existed? But also like, you know, it's getting cooler. Like, okay, we actually have to wear a jacket. Like I actually have to put real shoes on, not just sandals. <laughs> I'm very lucky in California. Anyway, thanks for being here. I hope you guys are doing well. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.